Everybody, welcome back to New Market. I'm Yumble, and today I'd like to go over buildings in City Skylines with you. I'd like to use our city as a way to show you how I implement a few different tweaks to the game that can uh, drastically change how the game interacts with buildings, and ultimately how your buildings function or grow in a given area. This is all uh, stems from a bunch of questions that I've received in comments recently while building this city, so I figured I'd use the city as a platform to, to show you that today. In City Skylines, all of the functional buildings basically fall into one of two categories. So there's, there's the ploppable buildings we'll start with. Ploppables are things like schools, unique buildings, services, utilities, all of the things in the menu down here that you can hand place, like a park would fall under a, a ploppable structure. Schools for sure, transit buildings, fire department, medical, garbage, police, all of these things, the, uh, the water and power as well are all ploppable. Those are hand placed, you have to go into the menu, put them down, simple. I, I would say those are the, the simplest type of building in city skylines. The second type is a bit more unique. The second type is growables. So these buildings in the back here are all grown by zoning the area. And this is probably the first type of building that everyone gets in the game. I think the tutorial initially says build a road, zone some residential, bada boom, easy. Uh, they grow by type, of course. So we've got residential, commercial, industrial, office. Um, that's all. That's all gravy. Awesome. They can be grown in districts as well. So a vanilla function of the game is actually being able to create a district and then assign a a type to it. So you can you can assign these different uh, industrial types. You can assign leisure. Uh, what is it? Leisure, tourism organic local produce, all of these things will change what types of buildings spawn in a given area. Some of them require DLC, but they can be, be affected by districts. Now these can be further changed. These two concepts can be further tweaked to suit your needs. I wanna show you how to do that using a couple mods today. The first two mods I wanna talk about apply primarily to ploppable buildings, but they will also affect your growable buildings too. So these are kind of blanket mods that affect everything. They are ploppable Rico and realistic population. I'm gonna link all of these in the description, so if you're trying to get them from the Steam Workshop, I got you, it's fine. Ploppable Rico first. Imagine a situation where you want to have a larger building in the game, and that's not a problem. All of the, uh, or many of the, unique buildings are large buildings. None of the default zonable buildings or growable buildings are larger than four x four. This four x four square is actually as large as a growable building can get. But I wanna have a Wegmans here and I wanna have it be functional. You'll notice this is larger than four x four, but it's a unique building. So it doesn't actually do any commerce. It doesn't fulfill the, the commercial need in the Rico settings, Rico being residential, industrial, commercial offices. This has no effect on that. It's essentially a giant park. On the other hand here, this AMC, I downloaded it with, with preloaded settings for ploppable Rico. So this is the ploppable Rico menu. The author settings for this, I'll, I'll let you take in the interface for a second. The AMC movie theater is what is selected right now. I can change any of its commercial settings or how it fulfills Rico. I could change it to any type of building really, but this is so we have a large building, a unique building that is also functional. The author has predetermined that this is a low density commercial building. So going down the list, uh, the drop down menu you'd select was commercial, low, commercial low, as opposed to tourism or something like that. Level two is a good default because that's in the middle. And it also uses realistic population mod. So this is all predetermined, and it's using realistic population to determine how many jobs are gonna be applied. So this building has 36 workers as modified by realistic population. I know that that's a lot to take in, but to start fresh, this building has no presets on it, and I wanna make this a low density commercial building because this is a low density area in our city, kind of a suburban sprawl on the edge of what will be downtown later. I'm going to go to the Rico settings. Check this out. I want to add local because right now there's no there's no local setting, uh, oop, mod setting. There's no author setting, and there's no local setting. The author setting would be predetermined, 
So I have some other predetermined uh, things. Maybe a Whole Foods would work well here too. It doesn't really matter to me. So Wegmans, Whole Foods, same difference. I'm gonna hit add local. I know I want this to be commercial. I want it to be a low density commercial. I want it to be commercial low as opposed to all of these things. I don't really care to change it. Level two seems to be a fine default. I'm gonna use realistic population mod to determine how many jobs should happen here. I'll explain realistic population better later, but it's essentially a modifier for how many workers or how many people live in each building based on the size of the building. I'm gonna hit save and apply, and let's see what, what this has done to us. Deselect the building and reselect it. Okay, so realistic population has run amok on this one. These mods work in conjunction with, another, with one another, Reco, uh, ploppable Rico and realistic population. It says 200 people work here. I'm going to imagine that more like maybe 100 people work here at, at a large grocery store. This one has 36 workers for the movie theater. That seems okay to me. A Wegmans probably has maybe 120 workers or so. I'm just making up a number, but if I want to change the number of workers, now that we've successfully converted this to low density commercial, people will shop here, people will work here, but I want the number to be a bit better. <laughs> I want it to be maybe 110, let's say. So I've clicked realistic population. I've typed in 110. I'm going to hit add custom settings. So I manually just changed that to 110. Realistic population will also affect your low density buildings. So like a, a low density zonable residential building, it'll convert this to, to guaranteed one out of one households. If you ever find that you have a, a townhouse or something like that, that seems like it should fit more households, you can go in and change that if it seems incorrect. Like over here, some of these buildings seem like, like this one, for instance, one, two, three buildings in one. So I had to manually change this to three households for this little townhouse, New England townhouse scenario. Uh, so I had to go into real pop. I remember doing this specifically, convert it to three homes because by default, it thinks that a low density, the realistic population mod will read a low density household, a low density residential building as being a single family home. In this case, convert that to three, not bad. So those two work in conjunction with one another to change the, the type of buildings or how the game sees a given unique building and also how many jobs or how many homes are provided. There's one additional mod that I would strongly recommend getting for your ploppable buildings. I didn't think to mention it initially, but I think it's very important. Big game changer. Building spawn points. So this button up here at the top, you can see that there are two little orange circles, little spawn markers on this. The back door at the loading dock, I've decided to put uh, disaster, garbage, mail, you know, post, cargo truck, all of the deliveries and things like that are going to go to the to the back door. So we're going to keep that away from the front where there might be potential uh, citizen traffic going on. But the front door will play host to the ambulance, fire truck, hearse, police, taxi. So what I've done is split it so all of the all of the citizen interactive things go to the front and all of the business interactive things go to the loading dock, just like in a realistic scenario. Um, so I've put a road here also. It'll also tell you which road it corresponds to. Very, very handy. You can split this in a number of different ways. If you want to put things in different places or move this or add a point and further divide these, you totally can. Uh, but building spawn points deserves to be on this list, in my opinion. Feel free to check out my full-length tutorial on that if you want to see really how to use it. Now, on to the growable buildings. Growables are probably the first type of building you encountered in the game because it makes you zone a, a residential area initially to grow your population. But the two mods that I would recommend to kind of change how that functions are building themes and advanced building level control. So these two work in conjunction to, to get good results. Let me show you what I mean. Normally, when I go in and I, and I designate, oh, I, wanna, I want a building to grow here. I don't actually want that to grow there, but let's say, oh, I want a building to grow here. The game normally lets whatever buildings are available grow there. So any house, any house of this size or smaller than this size can grow within this given area. 
But let's say that I want to create a specific theme for an area. You'll notice all of these houses are different but similar. They all sort of look like they belong together. This is called the American Eclectic Theme. And I've applied that to this area. By clicking on Suburbia here, you see I've got, I've got this uh, district called Suburbia. And it's actually this area and this area down here. I've separated the district in two. But I want those same buildings to spawn everywhere because that's classic US suburbia. So American Eclectic. What I've done is in the theme workshop, I subscribed to the building type of American Eclectic. I got every single one of them. Uh, they're in a collection, so it's very easy. Generally, like a collection of buildings will be made. And I also downloaded the theme for that. I'm going to uh, click the district and then I'm going to hit themes. And these are all of my themes. Some of them are downloaded. So the ones with um, really official, nice names, American Eclectic Theme, American 1900 Low Density Commercial, these are downloaded from the Steam Workshop. Corn Dogs, I think I made that one, pretty sure. Um, a lot of these I built, uh, Ranch, I think I made Ranch as well, we love that. So this will allow the buildings within it to spawn. I'm gonna click uh, to, to activate this, you have to hit Enable Theme Management for this district. I'm going to click Theme Manager and American Eclectic Theme. You'll notice that all of the buildings are checked off here, all of the American Eclectic buildings. There are other buildings that might fit and I can add them if I want to. I can click the checkbox to include it. American Dream would probably fit, but I'm not going to do that just now. The other caveat to this whole thing... Ooh. I could probably throw these in there and be totally fine. Uh, 1900 Midrise would not fit, therefore I'm not going to check the box, right? But the other caveat to the whole thing is that each building has a level. And when you initially zone it, the game wants to find a building that's level 1. So that happens to be level 1. Let me see... why don't I see them? There are other American Eclectic buildings. Oh, you know what it is? I think the mod that I'm about to introduce is actually limiting it at this level. You'll notice there's nothing below level 3 being shown. The reason for that is because I'm using level control. This is called advanced... what's it called? Advanced building level control. Uh, let's move this over so we can see it better. We can't. It's a it's a district. So advanced building level control. If I allowed this to be level one, it would show all of the level one households in this area, which are essentially construction sites in this pack. Maybe you want that. In my case, I wanted to skip right to level three. So I've set the minimum level for this district to level three. Maximum level, level five. I want them to level up as we go. Workplaces are level one through three. I've left that as it is. There are no workplaces in this theme. Uh, you can force upgrade, you can force downgrade, you can do all kinds of things, random spawn levels. So I think of these as working really well in conjunction, because sometimes you will find yourself in a situation where you've created a custom theme. So if I go into Theme Manager, let's say, let's say I create a custom theme. This is called Custom Theme. That's great. And you can mix any type of buildings within this that you want. They don't have to be the American Eclectic buildings. It can be whatever you want, any level. Uh, all of these like level one houses. Let's say you don't want any level ones or what's more common in my, in my experience is that a pack of buildings will sometimes not have a level one building. Sometimes they'll start at level two or level three. I don't know that I have an example offhand but there are certain buildings, or there are certain styles of buildings that you might want to use that don't show up in level one. The Brooklyn pack that I'm using only has a limited number of level one buildings, let's say. So that might be a good reason to skip to level two or level three, like I've done in this case. No buildings will spawn without level control if the game is looking for a level one building and you have not supplied it in your in these designations here. If you haven't allowed a level one building in your theme, nothing will happen and you'll sit there waiting for buildings to spawn. You'll say, my residential demand is full. Why isn't it spawning? Nothing will happen. So 
using level control just gives that added layer where if there's no buildings, I'm just reiterating the same thing at this point, but you get the drift, you get the drift. If there's no buildings of that type, you can skip a level to get to level two. But once you've done it, it's beautiful. Once you've done it, it's very easy to zone it in. I have high residential demand. It's automatically gonna spawn American eclectic buildings in this area. Without, without question, these all have to be American eclectic. That's the rules. That's how it is. And it's probably gonna be largely level three, I would assume, because it's gonna to go to the lowest level first. As that area grows in, let's talk about this for just a moment. You'll notice that we have this, uh, this Art Deco ice cream parlor and a Dunkin' Donuts in this incomplete commercial area, this, this, under, this work in progress, right? You'll notice these are growable buildings. Take my word for it. I don't know if there's a way to prove that necessarily. Doesn't matter. What's the difference? Once you have Ploppable Rico, you've really blurred the lines between the types of buildings and it's very flexible. But you'll notice there's no actual zoning beneath these buildings. The way that I got this here is because it is a function of Ploppable Rico, actually. Let's go into the mod settings and I'll show you. So Ploppable Rico, it's, it's under Rico Revisited in the settings, I'm sorry. Rico Revisited, also known as Ploppable Rico, lets you plop growable buildings and you can plop them outside of their zoned area. Typically when you try to, let's say you use Find It, the magnifying glass down here, let's say you use the mod Find It, and you try to place one of those growable assets, it'll actually disappear. The game isn't good at handling that on its own, so you need a framework that adjusts the game to let that building survive out of its given zoning. So you can plop growable buildings with no construction, uh, Rico growable buildings, non-Rico growable buildings. So growable is the point. So those buildings that usually require zonings can survive outside of a zoning. And if you're a detailer, this is immensely helpful because I would prefer not to zone this area in and just get a random, even a pack of buildings isn't gonna do it for this. I want this area to be very hand placed and have that really curated feel rather than this kind of levelly up all over the place asset fest. I'd rather hand place. I picked a Dunkin' Donuts and an ice cream parlor initially very intentionally, right? Um, so global, bu global buildings can survive outside of the correct zone. Good. Global buildings can survive without required district specializations. So you can place buildings. Let's say you want to use an IT tower. Let's say you want to use it within the district specializations like I spoke about earlier. There are these, uh, like for instance, office IT cluster. If I wanted to place an IT cluster building outside of an IT cluster district, this mod allows it to survive there where normally it would disappear. Uh, make all plop growables historical. This is good because we don't want them to level up. We don't want them to change. And it also causes the, the bulldozer to give us a message. It'll say, you're about to destroy your historical building. You place this on purpose. Are you sure you want to do that? It treats it just like a, a ploppable building where you don't want to delete it on accident. Whereas growables, it doesn't care. You can just go through and and destroy them because the game is is really flexible with it, letting you delete them. But if this is historical, which is this button here, I've hand placed it, it's historical. I maybe want to rethink deleting that potentially. A bunch of other useful things within this. Let's see. Oh, that's a that's a new one. Advanced building level control apparently works in conjunction with it to lock plopped growables. Uh, levels. I didn't even know that was there. That's fine. That's whatever. I'm not gonna, I'm not too concerned about that. But yeah, ploppable options. You can change uh, building costs. It gives you a bunch of uh, flexibility. Sometimes you'll get low land value complaints from certain buildings. I'm trying to get a certain look for an area. The land value may come later, so I don't want those annoying pop-ups to happen. Uh, but yeah, very, very, very handy mods to have. The last one that I'd recommend, just as a as a super addendum to the whole thing, I would also get Life Cycle Rebalance Revisited. This one here. Uh, this automatically adjusts the life cycle of your citizens. So I probably should have put this earlier in the video. This is the end, I'm sure. But if you are not a fan of death waves, so you've probably noticed if you zone in a huge residential area and you find that everyone dies at the same time because they moved in at the exact same age that is default expected behavior of the game 
This allows you to, to tweak how quickly or slowly citizens age. Uh, it allows you to, to um, change the death care options. This allows you to change random illness percentage, so it'll affect the health of your citizens. I really don't tend to change these, I don't think. Like, if I, if I hit reset to defaults, nothing will change. Because by default, everything's pretty good. You can change how, how transport is affected, or who, what demographics, and where they live. What types of transport they'll favor. Immigration. This is the crucial one, in my opinion. Apply 25% variation to immigrant education levels. This kind of randomizes, or adds a, a little random element, 25% in either direction, I suppose, to how educated the citizens are when they move to town. I don't want all of my high-density residents to come in at the same exact edu education level, at the same age, with the same health, because that's what causes death waves. Uh, that, whole, that whole menu helps a lot. So really, at the end of the day, it comes down to the, the mods I recommend are Ploppable Rico, Realistic Population. Along with those, I recommend Building Spawn Points. Remember, I modified the Building Spawn Points. Really good idea. For Growables, I recommend Building Themes and Advanced Building Level Controls to give you uh, a lot of control over your districts. And also, to prevent death waves, get Life Cycle Rebalance Revisited. Everyone, thank you for hanging out. Thanks for letting me talk this over. It's one of the most common questions that I get is how to do building styles in-game and how to convert unique buildings to be useful and, and also how to plop zonable buildings uh, using find it, that kind of thing. Uh, if you like the video, feel, to, feel free to subscribe to the channel. We're building New Market currently. This is our New England city. Uh, we're, I also do tutorials, obviously. Here we are. Uh, also, feel free to follow on Twitch. Uh, we do live live streams twice a week where I'm, I'm kind of booping around in the city during that time as well. Building stuff, talking stuff, talking about stuff, answering questions. Um, we also have a community Discord, so feel free to hang out over there if you want to message me or if you want to post pictures of your city. I'd really appreciate it. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.